Got some hay we got to get unloaded. So, in our area right now, hay is uh, hard to come by to say the least. I wish we had enough property to where we could actually grow our own hay. Fortunately, that's just not in the cards right now. The other thing is uh, round bales, and a lot of people use round bales, but we don't have a tractor, and we've tried doing the round bales without a tractor, and that really stinks. Well, we got a surprise for you today. That's super exciting. Um, so we'll show you that. But what I really want to talk about is farm kids. A lot of you watching this probably have farm kids, or maybe you are a farm kid yourself. I was actually able to take one of our three, Ellery, uh, out to Oklahoma this past week. And we went to the Oki Homesteading Expo out in uh, Pryor, Oklahoma. That was actually the first time I've ever been in Oklahoma, and it was a really cool drive, gorgeous trip. We got to hang out with a lot of friends, make some new ones. Ellery had a whole bunch of kids she could play with, um, and it was just a really, really good time. What I thought was cool was that uh, Ellery didn't go to school on that Friday, and some people might think that's horrible for a kid to miss school, but I think the education she got on seeing a whole bunch of the country and being around all these speakers and animals and stuff like that um, is sometimes worth a lot more than just your normal academics. So let me show you uh, just a little snippet of what we experienced when we went out to Oklahoma to the Oki Homesteading Expo. Luna, make way, make way, make way. Excuse you, excuse you, you're out of my gate. I guess, I don't know, maybe it's your gate. Oh, get off the gate, get off the gate. You guys gotta get off the gate. All right, oh gosh, oh. <laughs> Goats are fun. Excuse you, look at, see that's what I'm talking about. This is that nonsense. This is that nonsense. <sighs> Get in there. Well, how's everybody? Francine. If you didn't know, Francine is our very quiet goat. Sort of keeps to herself. Veruca is pretty sweet. And uh, looks like... We look back here at her her udder. Look at it. It's filling up. She said, uh, you don't get to milk, milk me unless you give me a treat. I checked Luna. Not yet, but I think the exciting thing is going to be that um, Veruca here, I think she was bred with Miyagi. That's the only one she could have been bred with. And we used a really high-tech technique. Well, Lauren did at least. And that's going to be involving those cinder blocks over there. And basically what what Lauren did was she put these cinder blocks out here so Miyagi could stand on those and breed with the Lamanjas because although he is a 
good size buck for a Nigerian dwarf. He uh, he just can't quite get there. And so Lauren actually uh, helped in the process a little bit. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? She helped be a matchmaker of sorts. You guys do not let old Quag eat. I'm sorry, Quag. They don't let you eat, huh? They don't let you eat. So Luna's actually Quag's mom. But if you know goats, then you know that they don't remember that kind of stuff. I don't think they do. Maybe they do. I don't know. I feel like they don't. Yeah, he's a sweet boy. He's a sweet boy. He doesn't stink too bad yet either, do you? You don't stink too bad. Now Miyagi, on the other hand. Whoo so I think Veruca's pregnant, and Miyagi did that. Luna, I don't think, is yet. And Francine, she has never kitted before. And there is... No, there's no signs back there. She could be sterile for all we know. She really hasn't proven her, herself to us yet. We're hoping that old Quag, when he gets old enough, that he'll do it. The cool thing is, is that um, being that Miyagi bred Maruka, who he's a Nigerian dwarf, and she's a La Mancha, we're going to have mini Manchas. So that's super exciting. What are these chickens doing out here? Got Momiv. What's up, Momiv? How are you, buddy? He's a gigantic rooster right there. That dude is, oh my gosh, he is over two feet tall. He's massive. And the little story about Momiv that I think's funny is he was actually um, the weakest rooster that we had and he got bullied by all the other roosters because as you can tell in here, we have a few. Um, so yeah, he got bullied by everybody and one day Lauren, man, everybody's going crazy. Lauren found uh, him laying right in this area in some water. He was soaking wet, looked like he was dead, but he wasn't. And when he came back from that, you guys, I'm telling you, he, this dude was like, he's now the king rooster and he's super healthy. And look, I want you to look at his tail. Isn't that a gorgeous rooster? Show, show him what you got there, Momiv. His crow's pretty, uh, pretty silly sounding, but man, this guy, I think he's a well summer rooster and comment down below if you think I'm, I'm wrong about that. But uh, he is a gorgeous, he's a gorgeous, gorgeous rooster. I also like barred rock roosters a lot. That's why old King George here, he's a very pretty fella. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Look at that tail. While I have these girls distracted, let me show you uh, our surprise. You guys, you stay here. Hello, Jolene. Hello, little one. Hello. Here's the story with this little guy. Hi, Jolene. Nice. Hi. So this guy, uh, I came home from work yesterday. I usually come home around the same time. And... Um, I park right in front of the goats over here, and so first thing I see when I come home is always them, and usually the little manchas are just right in my face as soon as I get out of my car. But then I see this little guy just laying out by his mama in the pasture. Hey, little dude. Hey, little dude. He's still growing into his ears. Look at this guy. You're adorable. You're adorable. Yeah, mama's getting defensive. It's okay. You know I'm not going to hurt him. You know. You know I take care of these babies. Oh, you sweet boy, huh? You're a sweet boy. Okay. Yeah, he's a loud one. He got a full belly, so he's been eating really good. So this is Jolene's... I don't even know. I wish I would have kept better track. She's kitted numerous times. Uh, probably he's probably her I don't know sixth kidding or so you know right you're a good mama you can be a jerk but you're a good mama you're a good mama huh so the plan is Jolene will be starting our milking um our milking year or season I guess if you will because we are a goat dairy farm and so Jolene is one of our star employees and although she can be pretty ornery, um, she she still provides us some really, really good milk. Isn't that right? Oh, you're going to be sweet. So we'll let him spend a few days with Mama, sort of getting his good nutrients, getting colostrum and everything. And then we will um, train him to a bottle. And 
basically get him to the bottle and which will let him grow closer to us and um, we'll be able to start milking Jolene. Isn't that right? She's got a lot to say today. A lot to say today. Oh, no, you can't. No, I got nothing for you. You can't drink off of me. If you've never experienced baby goats of your own, they are one of the most adorable things ever. And then Nigerian dwarf babies are probably the cutest of the cutest. Do y'all know my buddy Roger here? It's little Raj. Little Raj. Our only blue-eyed fella. He's our only blue-eyed goat on the whole farm. Oh, he's trying to do the head rub on me. Trying to do the old head rub. <laughs> <laughs> Tina and Peyton. Peyton, how are you? Tina Tina has never been overly friendly. I, she's not mean, let me clarify that. She's not mean, but um, well, you can taste the hay dust on me. Oh my gosh, you're biting my knee. We have to fix this gate. This gate is just jacked up. But Peyton's always been really um, uh, overly affectionate. And how that actually hurt. You're being a jerk. You're being a jerk. That's a good beard you got going so far. But uh, Tina, she's not as much for the love as you can see here. But Ollie, on the other hand, Ollie likes some attention. What are you doing, Ollie boy? What are you doing? What you doing? Ollie likes his friends. Ollie, all of Ollie's friends are goats. He really, you like hanging out with them, huh? I will say this, Ollie needs his uh, tusks trimmed. Man, those things are getting long. His grow really, really fast. Um, so we need to do that at some point. But man, he is a... You're a handsome dude, though. I'll give you that much. Oh, isn't that right? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. He doesn't got his smell going too bad yet. Like I was saying earlier, this time of year is really rough for getting hay just because of the cuttings and the weather and stuff so it always is but um with, i think with the price of fertilizer right now holy smokes the price of hay has went up a lot and then not very many people have it we always do um as our general feeding regimen we always do some high quality bermuda we stick to the grass haze we actually have a friend who is a cattle farmer small scale very good person, very good people. It's a couple. And um, he was telling me that last year he paid around 300 bucks a ton to fertilize his hay field. This year he paid, are you ready for this? Or has to pay, I guess, uh, $850 per ton of fertilizer. Now I'm no math whiz, but if you got a whole bunch of fields and $300 to $850, a $550 increase in price to fertilize your hay field, that is a huge, huge difference. Would you not agree, Miss Fiona? What do you think, Buford? What do you think? Buford, boy. Oh, Jangles. What you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> so, exciting thing is, Fiona here is going to uh, her boyfriend's house for the next couple months. We're going to go take her on Saturday. We're going to take her to our friends who have a couple of jacks or male donkeys who are minis just like her. And we're gonna breed her, so that's exciting. You agree, Fiona? She is so, so weird around me. It's only me. Lauren, come out here and love on her, but she's always like that with me. You gonna let me come? Cause she doesn't like the camera either. I will say that much. She hates the camera, as you can tell. These two, being that they were our first two goats, they don't mind. They like, they like cameras and stuff. Y'all a little du dusty, you know that? Been taking some dust baths. What do you think, Buford? So yeah, we're gonna take her to be bred and we'll bring her back after a couple months and then next year she will have a baby. Isn't that right, Fiona? You let me pet you? Yeah. Yeah. 
you can actually be nice sometimes. Look at those big old ears. Look at those big old ears. You can hear stuff from a mile away, huh? And dust coming off you. You see that dust? You gonna go make some friends, huh? And you're gonna have a baby? She actually has had a baby before. Before we had her, she did have a baby at least once. I can't remember. How many babies will this be for you, Miss Fiona? Huh? Jeez Louise, your, your roommates over here, they're silly. They're silly. They're silly boys. Well, everybody's doing good. Babies are popping out, so that's exciting. Stuff's starting to grow for the first time in a couple months. So everything is good on the farm. Got that sunflower cover crop coming in. A little uh, sparse in a few spots, but ultimately it's looking pretty good. I'm excited for these fun sunflowers to uh, grow up. Check on these two goobers. Hello. Okay, okay. I want to tell you all something that's pretty exciting too. While we were gone, while Ellery and I were gone, um, Lauren moved these pigs from way over there to over here all by herself and she fenced in this area where we have a whole bunch of brambles these are raspberry brambles and as you can see slowly but surely they are getting rid of them it's pretty exciting i still got to get this tree out of here I cut this tree down um and i wasn't able to get it all last year so i need to get in here with my chainsaw and finish getting this tree but we want this area cleared here next to the garden and they're doing a fairly good job of it but talking about the homesteading event i really think it was awesome um i think it was a really good uh event for ellery to go to and a lot of times with a kid and adults a lot of our best learning can be done not from books but from experience if that makes sense i really value the experience of traveling several states away out west if you will to oklahoma with ellery just me and her and sort of just living it up out there ellery told me that she had a blast while we were out there and that she really enjoyed it and she learned a little bit but ultimately had a lot of fun there's a bunch of animals out there and a bunch of like-minded people who homestead and farm of all different scales from really really small to really really big and it was a really good experience she got to hang out with a lot of other kids her age she really enjoyed um hanging out with the kids from naked hog and uh with mary carl from cog hill she really enjoyed just running around and they were just young girls just being girls they were they were having a blast they had a good time and um, i think that the value that comes from that is is more than you can put into words so if they do it next year i'd really highly recommend that you guys try and hit up the oaky homesteading expo bring your kids uh, you know really so that i think they'll have a really good experience and um, we need to start raising the next generation of farmers and homesteaders and getting these kids ready because video games and phones and stuff that doesn't do them all that much good but teaching them how to grow food and raise animals and be good stewards of what god's given us out here that's there's a lot of value in that i do want to remind you all that next month we will be in alabama in the selma area at petals from the past that will be on the 23rd of april and we're going to be out there with several other YouTube channels. But we will be out there, Petals from the Past, Antiques in the Garden, on April 23rd. I uh, can't remember what time it starts. Maybe, maybe 9. I don't know. Why don't you go check it out on Petals from the Past on their website. But I do want to remind you, what we always say here, that when you homestead, you're home fed. No matter that be from dairy to veggies to fruits to anything else growing your own is always going to be the best way to go and teaching our kids how to grow their own too but for now that's all we got it was good seeing y'all i really enjoyed spending some time with y'all now that we're back home in georgia we'll see y'all next time <laughs>